welcome to this Kerbal Space Program based overview of the ESA ALS mission. Launching August 21st around 9.20 pm, GMT on board of an Ariane Space Vija rocket designated VV-12. Today I would like to give you a short overview over the Vija rocket and the ALS satellite. Vija, which you can see launching here in the background, is an expandable launch vehicle with a height of 30 meters and a launch mass of roughly 137 metric tons. It consists of four stages, three of them solid rocket stages and one upper stage liquid rocket. Vija was originally developed by the Italian and the European Space Agency and its reference mission is putting payloads of up to 1.5 metric tons into a circular orbit of 700 kilometers height. Maiden flight of Vega took place on February 13, 2012, having racked up 11 launches so far, all of them successful. Currently burning we see is the first stage dubbed P80 for its propellant weight of 80 metric tons in the design phase, which was later increased to 88 tons. The booster includes a thrust vector control system, which consists of two electromechanical actuators that operate a movable nozzle powered by lithium ion batteries. Boosted development and production is done in Belgium. It is intended for a burn time of 110 seconds, lifting the Vija rocket from its start to over 50 km of height, accelerating it to more than 1700 meters per second or 6120 km per hour for everyone more used to going by car than by rocket boosters. After P80 has done its job of giving the rocket its initial kick, it is getting separated for the second stage Sephiro 23 taking over. As Vija is intended to put Aeolus into a sun-synchronous polar orbit, it will launch into northern direction to reach its final orbital inclination of 96.7 degree, which is a slightly retrograde orbit. The second stage, Sephiro 23, which will burn only 77 seconds, is bringing 24 metric tons of propellant to the table. As I'm a strong believer in consistent naming, I assume the 23 refers to 23 tons planned while under development. Igniting at about 53 km height, it accelerates the rocket to about 3800 meters per second, which equals 13680 km per hour for the car guys. As the name might suggest, the stage was developed in Italy, partially founded by Avia and the Italian Space Agency. At 127 km height, third stage Sephiro 9 is ignited, containing guess how many tons of propellant? Yes, 10.5. Ray for consistent naming, but fun aside, I strongly assume both of the numbers, 23 and 9, refer to the initial design propellant mass, as it was with the P81 stage. Fairing separation will take place a few seconds after stage 3 ignition, but for mainly Kerbal Space Program reasons, this is done while separating in the video here. You can now already see my Kerbal Space Program interpretation of the Aeolus satellite payload on top of the rocket. If you not find it, it's the boxy grey thing with the telescope on top. After first stage engine cutoff, our rocket is at nearly orbital velocity of more than 27,000 km per hour. Here the upper stage called Avum is taking over. It's using a Russian-made RD-843 liquid rocket engine with a whooping thrust of 2.42 kN. First burn of this engine will place our rocket on the proper apogee, while second burn after a longer phase of coasting finally places our payload into its proper orbit at a height of 320 km and an inclination of about 96.7 degree. Fun fact, after an initial successful start of Vega in 2012, Germany, which before was not interested in joining development of the Vega rocket, hopped on the success train and will provide a new upper stage motor for the Avum stage in the future. And now let's talk Aeolus. Named after the Greek god of winds and king of the island Aeolia, this satellite is a first in observating wind profiles from space. The aim of the mission is to provide global observation of wind profiles, to better understand atmospheric dynamics, to be able to deal with many aspects of climate research and weather prediction. So if in future years weather forecast is telling you to leave the umbrella home, just trust them. They are using lasers for this now. Yes, lasers. The observation instrument on ALS is called Aladdin. Not the guy with the carpet, but Aladdin stands for Atmospheric Laser Doppler Instrument, which for beginners is the telescope on top of the satellite you can see in this video. To keep it simple, Aladdin is beaming an ultraviolet laser into the atmosphere using the Doppler shift information of the reflection to measure speed and direction of the wind. From space. With lasers. 
Don't know about you, but for me weather forecast got 20% cooler since I read this. The ALS satellite itself weighs in at roughly 1360 kilograms, carrying enough fuel for the mission lifetime of 3 years. It took ESA 16 years to build this satellite, as most of the instruments on board are really bleeding edge in their part of technology. Hopefully I could give you some insights on this upcoming ESA mission. If you would like to watch the launch of ALS, follow me on Twitter or keep an eye on hashtag ALS on Twitter and the ESA ALS website, which is also linked in the video description. I will be joining the ESA social event at the European Space Operations Center and providing you with updates, photos and videos from there as often as possible. Thank you for watching, Robert out.